In order to finish my studies, I have to make a project for my bachelor's degree. So, being passionate about C++ and game development, I decided to make something that definitely wasn't already overdone in this YouTube space. I made yet another game engine. But, I want to bring something a little different to the table. I wanted my engine to be low level, to be able to write your code in C++, and be able to edit and recompile your code while the engine is running. Can I even implement something like this? Let's find out. The reason why I didn't like using commercial game engines was because you mostly mess about with their scene editors instead of writing code, and the Entity Component System scripting model is pretty good for 3D action games, but for some games I would rather be able to have control over the entire game loop. And yes, I know I can also do that in Unity, I just make a controller script and all, but I wanted to write my own stuff, okay? This is Pika. And this is also Pika. Yes, my engine is named after a cat. But before we dive into it, let's talk about the philosophy behind my game engine. So, the idea is that the game engine will provide you all you need to write your own game-specific tools. Different games require different types of editors and technologies, so instead of using a good for everything solution, you can make your own custom editors for the game. The engine is based on what are called containers, and they are just a unit of work. A container can be used for gameplay code, for making a tool like an editor or a thread. In order to make a container, you just have to inherit from this class. Give to the engine some info about your container and finally tell him that it exists. Now, the best part about containers is probably their memory management system. They are partially memory leak free and hot code reloading, but we'll talk about those later. First, I'll show you around the engine. It was made using GimGui and they have some very basic stuff like an asset manager, a console and a log window. You can of course send messages from your game to the console or log errors. There are also some other nice features like shortcuts and you can also create shortcuts at runtime from your game code. Now let's look at a file in the explorer. I can copy the path that I can use in my CPP code to load it. If I want to open the file, I need to write a plugin for this file type. And a plugin is just a container. For images, I have already made a plugin. Let's see how it works. First, you need to inherit from the base class, similar to Unity or other engines. You then have to override some functions. The container info function is used to tell the engine information about your container. Here you can specify, for example, what extensions your container can open. And the engine will give you the path to that file when you open it from the editor. The create and update functions are pretty much self-explanatory. You can see that I pass many parameters to these functions and they hold engine functionality, memory allocators and other things. And you'll see later why am I doing things this way. Let's see how this would look like in the context of making a game. I have here a small Super Mario clone. I would like to edit the map, so for that I can go in the file explorer and open the map file with the map editor, which is a separate container. Here I can edit my level and when I'm done I can save the map, the game will update the level automatically. Now take a look at this. I can make a snapshot of the game memory and I can then return to it whenever I want. Now I would like to make the player be able to jump exactly 4 blocks. I can record the input while I try to jump and then play back that input on a loop. Now, while the player tries to jump over the wall, I'll modify the code to find a good jump value. Once the code compiles, you will see that the player code will update and it will be able to jump over the wall. I can also return to the old snapshot, even though I modified the code. Before I explain how I did that, let's very quickly look at 3D. I am just using my 3D library, so if you want more details, I have a video on that, but let's quickly see how it works in my engine. So like any other thing in this engine, 
this 3D module is just a library and you can use any other 3D library you want. But I already provided support for my library and it has some nice looking graphics and you can easily use it. You can create a model, add it to an entity and play its animation. Ok, unfortunately I don't have uh, yet a 3D editor to show you, but I'm working on it because I have a plan to make a 3D game in this engine, so if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. This is roughly how it will look like though. This is the editor from the library and I'll have to copy some code from here. Now, how is it possible to save the game state and even recompile the code? There is a concept in functional programming and it is called pure functions. A pure function has an input and an output and doesn't use external data. A pure function is special because it will always return the same output, given the same input. Our game runs in the update function. Let's try to make that function pure. How would we do that? Well, the output is the screen information. What about the input? Well, the keyboard input is part of the input. Now, the update function almost looks like a pure function. What do you do about the game memory? Well, we can pass it as an input and the modified state of the memory can be considered an output. Now, the update function is pure. Saving the game state just means saving the game memory and recording the input is, well, just saving the initial state and then recording the input. To do that, in practice, there are, of course, extra steps. You need a custom allocator that uses a big chunk of memory to save the data of your game. Also, since you will most likely use pointers in your game data, you need to be able to allocate that chunk of memory at the same base address if you want to reuse that snapshot. If you are interested in a more detailed explanation, make sure to like this video and I'll make a video where I look at the engine code and you can also check the Handmade Hero series because there I learned to do these kind of things. What about recompiling the code? Changing the code just means changing the game playing function while keeping the game memory. You could save the game memory in a file and restart your program, but I want to be able to recompile my code when the engine is running. In order to do that, I compile all the gameplay code to a DLL. When I recompile the DLL, the engine notices that it was changed and reloads it. Now again, I skipped many implementation details, but if you are interested in learning more about those, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll make an in-depth video. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to see when that video comes out, or the video where I make a game in this engine. Until then, if you are new to the channel, maybe take a look at my 3D engine or take a look at this video where I try to make a multiplayer Terraria in just 3 days. See ya!